Hi guys, in this video I want to take a closer look at something most people I know are not even aware it exists. The Organization of Islamic Countries, or rather the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which considers itself to be the collective voice of the Muslim world. Exactly what Muslim world are they referring to here? Sunni, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Sufi, Alevi, what grouping or organization do they represent? All of them? Looking at the history, it says they are over 40 years old and are safeguarding the interests of, well, not Muslims, but rather this undefined Muslim world. As though Islam had already achieved its goal and had installed a caliphate with Sharia worldwide. But relax, they've only managed to get 56 countries into the fold. Or, well, or 57. They don't really know. Wikipedia wins, as counting them does indeed yield a number of 57. Now, the criteria for being labeled an Islamic country or a member of the Islamic Cooperation Organization is also not quite clear to me. As a country like Nigeria is in this organization of Islamic Cooperation, but not even half the population is considered to be Muslims. I mean, Boko Haram, the Muslim terrorist group, does everything to change that, but it's still way below half. And apparently, the trigger for creating such an organization was an incident in what the OIC calls Occupied Jerusalem, without specifying who is occupying what. And just to be clear, who is in charge of what part of Jerusalem even today is unclear, even though Israel still declares it as its capital. But the name itself, Jerusalem, is neither mentioned in the five books of Moses, the Torah, nor in the Quran but appears almost a thousand times in the Old Testament and Jewish scriptures, the, the Tanakh. Islam obviously tried to copy the Jews and failed, eventually leading to a more confrontational course, which would explain the Islamic focus on the city of Jerusalem as yet another holy city, along with Mecca and Medina. Why Muslims see a need for a separate voice and different representation over and above and beyond the United Nations. I mean, this is beyond me. And once again, an indicator of the us versus them mentality I see so often in Islam. Why do so many Muslims constantly demand special treatment and consideration? Looking at the somewhat inflated OIC website, I ask myself, what does this OIC actually do? And as it turns out, not a lot. They spend considerable time, effort and money to sit together and decide what to complain about next. When it comes to constructive work, like defining terrorism, they veto everything and block all progress simply to avoid having Hamas declared a terrorist organization, which in my eyes it is. But they love making demands, don't they? It seems that if the United Nations ignore their childish requests or turn them down, they can't accept no for an answer and then have huge conferences on how to whine even louder. And just as an example, well, there's, there's many on their page, but this is one that I found. Considerable amount of space, time and money and effort is dedicated to something called Islamophobia. Hmm. I, I know what Islam is. And I know the, the mental health problem or illness called phobia, but why call Islam a mental illness or a mental disorder? On their page exclusively addressing this peculiar term, it would probably be the best place ever to explain this conspicuously empty, undefined expression. But they don't and prefer people guess and come up with their own definitions or misconceptions. In their annual reports, they keep on whining and complaining, saying, and I quote, we express profound regret and deep concern at the increasing acts of Islamophobia. But they, they never actually state what an Islamophobic act actually is and what about it is Islamophobic. The T 
term itself is an oxymoron as someone with a phobia tends to avoid whatever is causing it. So an act of something you are avoiding makes absolutely no sense at all to me. And then finally, in a 2015 paper, the OIC boss Marani realized there was a problem with this and decided to show the world what an idiot and academic fool he is. And he came up with this definition. And he says it is, I mean, this is the preamble, it is a regrettable fact, and he declares it a fact, that manifestations and incidents of hostile, deaf, and discriminatory, xenophobe, racist discourse, actions against Muslims, especially in the West, is still on the increase in their scope and intensity. And he calls this a fact. <clears throat> okay. Although, as yet, there exists no internationally agreed definition on the phenomenon of Islamophobia. Islamophobia can be defined as a contemporary form of racism and race, I mean, racism is a hatred or intolerance of another race or other races or whatever. And the word race itself is an arbitrary classification of modern humans. And here, here's a quote, based on any or a combination of physical characteristics such as skin color, facial form, eye shape, and now frequently based on such genetic markers as blood groups. Now, I can choose to be a Muslim, but I can't choose these genetic markers, which would be a race. So, what would this clown suggest are the racial characteristics of a Muslim? Ah. So let me try this again. A contemporary form of racism and xenophobia, ah, xenophobia, xenophobia, another unreasonable fear, distrust or hatred. But this time of anything strangers, foreigners, anything as foreign, different or whatever. And the funny thing is he's taking the word xenophobia and then sort of repeats the definition as though these are all, you know, d different things. So, okay, let me try again a contemporary form of racism and xenophobia motivated by unfounded fear, mistrust and hatred of Muslims and Islam. Hang on, if a Muslim, like a Sunni or a Shia, hates and kills another Muslim, like a Sunni or a Shia or maybe Ahmadiyya or whatever, then does this unwarranted fear of Islam is this now applicable to Muslims too? So should this actually be Muslimophobia then? <laughs> well then, why not the Kafirophobia I used a couple of years ago, but which never caught on? This is quite, this is funny. Now, Islamophobia is also manifested through intolerance, discrimination, and adverse political media, and even academic public discourse. Furthermore, differentiating from classical racism and xenophobia, Islamophobia is mainly based on radicalization and demonization of a religion and its followers. As such, Islamophobia is a direct and clear assault on the human rights and dignity of Muslims. Now, come on. I mean, how stupid do you need to be? It shows how dishonest and primitive these people are. Now, instead of accepting the Islamic scripture, demonstrating that they are better than their God, they only look to blame others for their own incompetent babble and dishonest denial of the contents of their religious texts. If they would accept the contents of the Quran and provide a single version as a translation or whatever, if, if we would have this as a base, we'd be much further along. But now to say that I, if I provide an academic public discourse that I am now Islamophobic, I and mean, that's crazy. I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't have a phobia. I am genuinely afraid of the political ideology known as Islam. I don't want to live under Sharia. I don't want to pay jizya to Muslims. I don't want to be a dhimmi. I want to be a free person. I want to have free speech. I want to have freedom of and from religion. And instead of, instead of bringing something constructive and, and, and positive, they write, you know, stupid stuff like 
We reiterate our commitment to continue efforts in engaging with the West and projecting the true tenets of Islam. Blah, 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 blah. Just some empty, hollow phrases, no substance. Nothing where a person can deduce what those true tenets of Islam actually are. I mean, they've, they, they just go without defining anything. And if they do define something, it's absolute nonsense. And then they demonstrate what a hypocritical bunch they really are. They say, and again, I quote, we call upon the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to set up an observatory at her office aimed at monitoring and documenting acts that led to incitement to religious hatred, hostility and violence. It's unbelievable. Half the Muslim population suffers due to severe human rights violations within Islam and they demand others be observed for human rights violations. Really? Muslims cut off hands and heads and demand others be monitored? Seriously? And to make matters even worse, they noticed that they were not really doing anything and came up with a 10-point program signaling action and decisions and I'm going to attempt to summarize them here and as always the originals will be linked in the source in the video description box. So this program intended to take the OIC into 2025 has a point number one and, and, and okay please be strong now. The declaration that this 10-year program from 2015 to 2025 is the second part of the 10-year program they came up with in 2005 to go into 2015. Now, we all know the Islamic God is somewhat inept when it comes to basic maths, but shouldn't humans know that a 10-year program starting in 2005 ends in 2015? There can't be a second part in 2016 or 2020 or whenever. Ah, maybe they should stick to working in moon years. But don't you worry, it gets worse. Item number two declares a goal, which is reinstating the Muslim supremacy they are entitled to. <coughs> Muslims have never pioneered anything, ever. Oh, sorry, with one exception, uh, the lone Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1999 in the US. W one, one. Item three out of the ten is rewording the Israel, well, the problem, where they simply claim that Israel is occupying some or other Arab region. Based on what? No idea. Again, they don't specify anything. They don't say who is doing what and what needs to be changed in what way to be. This is stupid. And then I must admit, I don't understand number four. We're fighting and we're at war all over the place, but everyone must immediately end all conflicts. Is, is that what it says? I have no idea. And then the, the next item, number five, this is utter hypocrisy. Muslims are taught to obey. Okay, now I remember this all my life in, in, in school. It was obey, obey, obey. And they need to ignore man-made scientific theories especially when they cover evolution, abiogenesis or cosmogony. I should probably add Bernoulli's law as it's the Islamic God holding up aeroplanes too. And, but they want to prioritize science? How? They spend less than half a percent of their GDP on research, compared to you know, like 8 or 10 percent in non-Muslim countries. Their output of scientific papers and patents is a fraction of non-Muslim countries. The Islamic countries are the worst when it comes to human rights, women equality specifically. And they want to prioritize gender equality? Hardly any Muslim accepts that the Quran and Sunnah contain misogynistic contents. And they want gender equality? How? They, they have the audacity to write that they propagate and get this an environment, and this is a quote, okay? An environment free from all forms of intimidation, religious or cultural discrimination. End quote. I mean, that's utter bullshit. Squared. 
Islamic countries censor everything they don't like and even switch off the internet out of fear Muslims might have access to unbiased and fact-based information. And if they do anyway, they're killed. There are Islamic countries where homosexuals are hanged and where atheists are declared terrorists just for thinking and not believing. Come on, get real. I mean, you first need to acknowledge you have a problem before you can even try fixing it. And number six out of ten is, well, it's an example of how this two-faced and obtuse organization works. They claim they strive for peace, claiming, and another quote, the OIC has been working assiduously to promote global peace, end quote, where they don't specify what the word peace is trying to describe. Is it the absence of violence, death and destruction, or the communal submission to one God? They can't even get together and condemn Daesh using substantiated and rational reasoning, let alone stop them. So what are they talking about? And why do they want global peace? to provide secure habitats for people, to enable a harmonious side-by-side -side of nations, societies and cultures. No, far from it. No, it's not peace that they're after. But to promote, another quote here, promote intra-OIC trade, investment, Islamic social finance, end quote, i.e. to trade amongst the OIC member states and screw the rest of the planet for profit, financial profit. And just to put this trade into some sort of perspective, the combined, and I'm looking at all 57 countries included, the Saudi and, and, and Iran, everybody included, GDP was like 15.87 like trillion 2014. What does that compare to? Well, it represents only about 15% of the planet and is less than the tiny EU, less than a single country like China or the USA with, with, with 17 and a half trillion. And once again, they lie to themselves, claiming that they act as an agent for peace and development in the Muslim world and beyond. <laughs> the remaining points are much the same, with more of this vague, waffling, vapid statements, talking a lot, saying nothing, like include many new areas of immediate concern relating to human development and well-being. <laughs> what does that mean? Or socio-economic empowerment, good governance, unshakable faith in the spiritual, moral and socio-economic values of Islam and of course human rights. Oh, come on. Freedom of speech and freedom of religion, wife beating, stoning, apostasy, gender equality. No, 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 no. Let, let's talk about other things instead. I mean, this is just all hot air. It's, it's totally useless. So what do they do? What actually comes out of this organization? What results do they have? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just stacks of very useless paper. Patting themselves on the back and telling each other what a great job they're doing, but nothing tangible, measurable or even remotely useful. Instead, they come up with a goal like bringing Palestine to state or country status, with Jerusalem as a capital, of course. They label this their inalienable rights. Why? Based on what? Can Germans demand the borders of 1938? No, don't be silly. So why should anyone take it seriously just because Muslims make a similarly stupid claim? They don't address real issues. They don't have a program to increase literacy, the, the basic problem, and don't tell people to ignore the Quran when science offers a more plausible, demonstrable, testable solution, and to ignore the Sunnah when society is no longer based in the 7th century Arabia. Now that would help, but the OIC does not want to help Muslims. They want to help the owners of the countries to stay wealthy and in power. And then of course, you, you, have, you have other things. You, you have like point number 11 out of the 12 is divided into an introduction and section discusses the rationale for the selection of 18 domains as priority areas for the OIC section 2 outlines the principles that guide the development of the 2050 defines the strategic goals under each priority area which are based on the resolution adopted by the relevant OIC is 
Come on. Who understands this? <laughs> this is utter nonsense and utter rubbish. But if you read this, and this is quite eerie, okay? When I read through the paper, I get the impression I'm reading a paper from communist Russia from the 70s. It's the same jargon, the same goals and the same hype. And if I look at their latest, what they term resolution, it makes me hang my head in shame that a human, I don't know, that they can come up with this amount of utter nonsense. That they, that they are not ashamed of doing this. It's 12 pages on a single topic, which is all Palestine, Palestine, Palestine. Is this the problem that we have on this planet today? And the OIC, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, co why can't they try to cooperate with non-Islamic countries? They want to enable trade and commerce. They, they're not talking about a God or Muhammad running companies and countries. So why do they concern themselves with a problem they can't solve? This entire document only does one thing, expect Israel to go poof, so that Muslims can live there and then kill each other in yet another country. But hang on, Muslims already live there. They have companies or work for others. They sit in government and administration. They live fulfilled and happy lives in freedom. So. Why would a Muslim in Indonesia or in, I don't know, somewhere else, worry about the Muslims in Israel? And it shows the stupidity and the futile attempts at reasoning with people who don't use reason to make decisions, just emotions and violence. So does the OIC help? Does the OIC help anyone? No. They and their bigoted views make it even worse driving in a wedge to exacerbate the hatred of Muslims toward the non-Muslim countries and the them and us divide. Nothing helpful or constructive, only destructive attempts at bringing 7th century culture to a place near you. Thanks for your time.